The purpose of this video is to give Excel users a better understanding of the different charts available in Excel and the general purpose of each chart type. This is not intended to be an in-depth demonstration of each chart type and how they're constructed, but more of a general overview of the different charts so you'll know which chart is best for which type of storytelling. The file I'm going to use in this demonstration, you can download this file from the link in the video description and use it as a foundation for creating any of these chart types. So if you have to make one of these and you're not sure how, you can just go to the sheet where I've already built that chart and then just replace my data with your data. To start, let's just see how we can create a chart. One way to do this is to go up to the insert ribbon and then we have a group of controls here called charts. Now the icons in the center are the categories of the different chart types. So we've got things like the scatter chart, the bubble chart, the pie charts, the donut charts. Then we have 2D and 3D line with 2D and 3D area, histograms, box and whiskers, combo charts, waterfall, funnel, stock, surface, radar, tree map and sunburst, and then column charts and bar charts, both 2D and 3D variety. If you're not sure which of these is best for you, you can click in your data and then go up and select recommended charts. Excel will analyze your data and come up with what it thinks is the best way to tell the story. So you can see here its first recommendation is for a column chart, its second recommendation is for a bar chart, and then its third one is for a pie chart. In my experience, anything after the third recommendation is usually not all that great a suggestion. Like I would not use a funnel chart for this kind of story. If you go up and click the All Charts tab, this will give you access to all of the chart categories, their variants of that category, and then the grouping strategies. So if you wanted to tell a story as a column chart that's 3D with a little bit of color, here's the chart for you. Each of the sheet tabs in this file demonstrates a specific chart type in Excel. If we go to the column sheet, this is an example of a column chart. Column charts and bar charts are great for when you're comparing items one against another, like the sales of kiwi compared to the sales of bananas. In each of these sheets, you can also see how I've set the data up to support this type of chart. So if you were to plug your own data in, the chart will automatically update, and then you've got yourself a chart. Bar charts, on the other hand, are the same as column charts. They're great for comparing things, but where column charts are vertical, bar charts are horizontal. But other than that, it's the same way of telling a story. So where column charts and bar charts are great for comparing items against one another, line charts are a great way to trend data over time. So if time is the driving component of your story, a line chart is a better way to visualize it. You could visualize this information as a column or a bar, but a line chart has that property of leading the viewer's eye from one data point to the next. Pie charts are a great way of saying how does one data point compare to all of the data points in the set. So we see that sky represents about 77 of the 99 units sold, shady 6 of the 99, and sunny 16 of the 99. But what are the rest of the chart types in Excel, the ones that aren't as common as column charts, line charts, and pie charts? Well, here's a box and whisker chart. Box and whisker displays the distribution, variability, and outliers in a data set using quartiles. So we have the first, second, third, and fourth quartiles. This will also visualize any outliers, anything that falls outside of that quartile range. I've included a legend on this sheet so you can look at this later to refresh your memory. Bubble charts will show the relationship between position and size. If we were showing something like sales or population by location, anywhere where there's a circle is a data point, but then the size of that circle reflects the scale of the value. Here's another one down here showing the relationship between speed and available games, and then what market share those games dominate. The bigger the circle, the more sales. Donut charts, like pie charts, allow us to have multiple categories. One of the weaknesses of the pie chart is we can only have a single category. But in the donut chart, we have concentric rings, each ring representing a different category. So in this case, I might have a donut chart showing sales, where each ring could be a year, and the sectors of the ring are the countries, or each ring could be a country, and the sectors of the ring are the years. Funnel charts are a great way to visualize how something moves through a process, typically in a top-down fashion. In this example, we had 80 hot leads, and of those 80 leads, 73 samples were sent. Of the 73 samples sent, 58 of those requested quotes. Of the 58 quotes given, 42 went into negotiation, and of those 42 negotiations, we resulted in 23 sales. Histograms look very similar to a column chart, but where every column in a column chart is a separate data point, histograms will bin or create ranges of data points, and you have complete control over the range width. 
So in this case, I'm showing how many sales there were of books in a certain $5 range. So in the $35 to $40 range, we had 15 sales, but in the $50 to $55 range, we had 27 sales. Here's a map chart where we use color density to represent value. So the darker the color, the larger the value. We can see here India and China are the dominant players when it comes to population. Pareto charts are an example of a combination chart. So this is really a column chart paired with a line chart. But the way Pareto works, we show in descending order in the column chart the reason an item was returned. And we can see the majority returns were for defects, followed by incorrect pricing, followed by the wrong product. The line chart, on the other hand, shows the percentage of returns based on the aggregation of those reasons. So defects made about 40% of all returns, but defects and incorrect pricing brought that up to almost 70%. Then when we got to defects, incorrect pricing, and wrong product, we were a little over 80%. And by the time we get to poor quality content, that's every reason returned, that's 100% of all reasons. Radar charts allow us to compare multiple variables across different categories using a circular or multi-axis layout. If we were to assume that zero means no skill and 20 is highly experienced, the further we reach into each one of these categories, the more of the shape we cover. So you can visualize where a person's strengths and weaknesses are. Scatter charts are great when you have a lot of data points and you're trying to find concentrations of activity. If you need to chart stock information, here we have a sample stock over a period of time and it shows every day the value of the stock when it opened, its daily low, its daily high, and the value of the stock when it closed. You can see on the left side of the screen the way that data has to be set up in order for this particular chart to work at all. Surface charts, both 2D and 3D, allow us to display a relationship between three continuous variables in a 3D landscape. The more data points you have, the greater the resolution of the chart. What's really cool about these is you can go into the settings of the chart and you can actually turn these and look at them from almost any angle. Sunbursts and tree map charts are great for showing distribution across categories. In this case, we can see children's books are the dominant category, followed by romance, then magazine, then mystery. But also within each of those categories, we break it down by subcategory. And we can see that First Readers is the greatest sales of children's books, followed by ABCs, then Tolstoy for Tots, etc. Young Adult makes up the strongest category in Romance. Sunbursts, on the other hand, do the same thing, but in a more circular layout. So again, we've got children's books, the main category, followed by Romance, then Mystery. And as before, we saw in children's books, we've got First Readers, followed by ABCs, then Tolstoy for Tots. Finally, the Waterfall Chart. The waterfall chart is like a column chart that has another invisible column chart underneath it supporting data points in the midair. What's really nice about this is the way it tells the story of how we got from where we started to where we ended up. So we can see visually that we started with a certain amount of money, we then spent some money, earned money, spent money, earned money, spent money, and at the very end, this is where the bank balance landed. Data has to be set up a specific way, and you can see that on the left. I've made a separate video on the construction, use, and configuration of waterfall charts, and if you'd like to see that video, you can click the little thing in the upper right corner, or if that's not there, the link in the video description. I thought that would just be a throwaway video that wouldn't get a lot of attention, but I was very surprised how many people watched that and had such great things to say about it. The chart is actually very useful. So those are all the main chart types in Excel. Download this file from the link in the video description. Replace my data with your data, and you're off to the races making any one of these chart types. Thank you for watching, and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.